life gets better from here. Hallelujah. We are so happy that you are here today. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So let's go ahead and stand to our feet. For those of you that are online, go ahead and stand before the Lord and give him praise and honor. You took 
away suicidal thoughts. You took away depression, Father God. You are the one that was there with me when I was lying in the bed and wanted to give up. Hallelujah, Father. I cast down the enemy to the pit of hell where he belongs to be. In the mighty name of Jesus, I am victorious because of you, Father. I am magnificent because you're magnificent, Father. And I call you glorious. I call you holy. I call you righteous. I call you God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father. We bless you in this place. If our tongues can't do it enough, Father God, it better be through our actions. In the mighty name of Jesus, we love you, Father. Hallelujah. As we begin to praise, praise your name, and to be in this moment, in this space, this is the time where you release it all. This is the time where you give that up. This is the time of deliverance. This is the time to call on God. This is the time to touch that blood. This is the time to touch the hem of his garment. This is that time. There is no greater time than right now. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah, Father. We welcome you here. We welcome you here in this space, in this atmosphere. There is no greater God than you, Father. Rely on him and him only because he is every us in the mighty name of Jesus. We call you Father. We raise our hands to you, Father. Because God, you are mighty. God, you are mighty. 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 Father, if I don't have no one here, Father, I am praising you for me. I am praising you for my circumstance. Besides the people that are left and right of me, besides the empty seats, Father, I praise you for me, Father, because I know you are the one that looks to me and nothing else. In the mighty name of Jesus, I love my actions, so my reaction will be better than what it needs to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 God, yeah, God, yeah, God, just where you at right now, just give God praise, where you are right now, just give God praise, you can be in your bed watching us online right now, guess what, lift your hands where you are and give God praise, you can be in your car on the way here, while you're in your car, one hand on the steering wheel and the other one up in the air giving God praise, give God praise today, yeah, yeah, welcome to the Excelling Church, Georgia campus where your life gets better from here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We are your lead pastors. Pastor Desmond Peacock Sr. along with my lovely wife, Pastor Jerrica Peacock. And we're going to get started with praise and worship, y'all. Are y'all ready? Hey, hey, hey. It's a vibe, y'all. Hey, hey. It's a vibe, y'all. Hey, hey. It's a vibe, y'all. Hey, it's a Holy Ghost vibe, y'all. Hey, let's go. Hey, Georgia. Lord your mighty, 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 Lord your mighty.
say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Say, Lord, you're mighty. Hey, Lord, you're mighty. Celebrate God in this place. If you know God is worthy, if you know God is holy, if you know God is holy, give God a dance in this place. Hey, 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 hey. Lord God, we love you in this place. We give you glory, Jesus. We give you honor, Lord God. There's nobody like you. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Yes, God, have your way in this place. Move up and down the aisles, Father. Sit in every seat, Father. Throw your weight around, Father God. Throw your weight around, Jesus. Fall fresh on us right now. In the name of Jesus, we worship you. You're worthy, Father. There's nobody like you, Jesus. You're the mighty God we serve, Jesus.
Yes, God, I surrender Jesus. I surrender it all to you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mm. Lord God, we thank you in this place. We worship you in this place. Welcome, welcome to the Excelling Church, Georgia campus, where your life gets better from here. We are excited today. We are excited today. Why? Why? Because God has blessed us with some musicians, y'all. God has blessed us with some musicians. God has blessed us with some anointed people this morning, and I'm happy. 
happy. My wife and I, the excelling family, we're happy. We're ecstatic. We're humble. Thank you so much, y'all. Thank you so much. It's just it's one thing to listen to our, our main campus and praise and worship, but it's a totally different atmosphere when God sends us Levites. Levites, y'all. Levites in the atmosphere. And we just praise God today. We just praise God because these gentlemen could have been anywhere today. They could have been anywhere today, but they decided to come and worship with us using the gifts that God has given them. God has a special word for not only you, but for our amazing musician team today, Lord. We, we just thank y'all. We thank y'all so much. We thank y'all so much. We love y'all. We love y'all. We love your sacrifice. And it's a vibe, y'all. I don't know about y'all, but it's, it's a vibe this morning. I'm just loving what God is doing. I'm loving how he's allowing this church, this ministry to grow in, in, in leaps and bounds. And so I'm excited. Amen. Amen, amen. Let's give God a praise one more time. Let's give God a praise one more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Wow. So, 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 so. What are we getting into now, Pastor Jericho? Our announcements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got a few announcements. Y'all may take your seats. We got a few announcements in the house. First thing is our 12 a.m. prayer pursuit. 12 a.m. prayer pursuit happens every Sunday morning at 12 a.m. Yours truly, I go to God in prayer for each and every one of you. If you have prayer requests, feel free to either email us at theexcellentchurchga at gmail.com or, or actually on the live, when we begin to live stream, feel free to put it in the comment section. And I just want to give a few praise reports. Just want to give a few praise reports. I don't know if y'all were if y'all were able to be on prayer pursuit last Sunday morning, but we had two specific individuals. We had a daughter. Her name was, and I gotta give a shout out because if y'all only understand why, you'll hear in a minute. Her name is Clarice Allen. And so her mother, Miss Dorothy, she put in the comment section that her daughter, over the past week, her daughter was on life support. She was on life support, not breathing. She had everything you can think of respiratorily wrong at that very moment, and then including COVID. So we put in the comment section, she, she, she asked for us to pray. And Pastor Jerick and I went into prayer. Not only did we go into prayer, but the people, the intercessors that morning, we began to pray, lay her hand, put, put, her, put on her name on the altar. And we began to decree and declare some things, y'all. We begin to decree and declare healing, healing to her body, healing to her body, healing to her body. Amen. And I got to give a praise report today. As of this Sunday morning at Prayer Pursuit, the praise report was not only was she responsive, not only was she responsive, somebody that was on life support, not only is she responsive, brother, she's breathing on her own. Not only is she breathing on her own, but guess what? She was talking to her mother on FaceTime, y'all. She was talking to her mother on FaceTime. And she's ready to come home. She's ready to come home. Don't tell me prayer don't change things. Don't tell me prayer doesn't change the atmosphere. Don't tell me that praise doesn't change the trajectory of what the enemy is trying to do. Amen. Amen. So we begin to pray for her immediate, immediate healing. And we truly believe that she's walking out of that hospital. We truly believe not only is she going to walk out, but she's going to get all the activity of the, her limbs, her, her body. She's going to be able to be healed from the inside out. And that girl is going to be a walking testimony, y'all. And guess what? She is 21 years old. 21 years of age. A young woman. So we thank God for that. We thank God for that. And then we got another praise report. A woman by the name of Michelle Hewitt. They also put in the comment section last Sunday about her concerns and her issues. And, and she was actually, I think, I believe she was unresponsive as well. Am I, am I right, Pastor Jerrica? Yes, she had a stroke and she wasn't able to, I, I guess she wasn't able to communicate. 
last Sunday. So we put her name on the altar as well. And this Sunday morning, well, actually, before this Sunday, the praise report is she's able to communicate, y'all. She was able to communicate. She was able to move and say yes. She was able to answer questions, which means she understood what was happening. Prayer, y'all. Prayer. Prayer. So I'm telling you now, I'm not tooting my own horn because this isn't me, this is God. All I am doing is I'm allowing God to use me as a vessel. So if you have any prayer requests, if you have any prayer requests, if you have any concerns going on, if you believe God to do exactly what he said he would do, all you got to do is put your faith and your mouth and your posture of prayer into action. And watch what God does, y'all. So 12 a.m. prayer pursuit happens every Sunday, every Sunday morning at 12 a.m. here on our Facebook live stream, which you're watching right now. Amen. So that's our 12 a.m. prayer pursuit. And next we have, what's, what's next, Pastor Jerrica? So I'm going to tell you this. This was amazing. If you all if you all was watching our midweek last Thursday, right, we had a special guest in the house, Pastor Jerrica's spiritual mom, Pastor Shamar Martin of the Kingdom and Kingdom of God Empowerment Center. She came in and we had a discussion. And the great thing about the discussion is we we were able to talk about a book. She's a published author. And her book is called Empowered for the Wait. Empowered for the Wait. And we began to, her, not me, it was actually Pastor Jericho and Pastor Shamar. They was up here and they had a talk. And not only did they minister to one another, but y'all, they ministered to me. They ministered to me. And so what we ended up doing that night is as an excelling ministry, we purchased a few of her books. We purchased a few of her books. And if you want to read this book, let me tell you, it's going to be amazing. It's going to do something amazing in your life. It talks about her it, talk, it pretty much talks about her journey into marriage, y'all. And it was amazing. So if you want to purchase her book, I believe you go to, what is it, Pastor Jerrica? You go to Shamar, shamarmartin.com and purchase her book. If you're, in the, if you're in the building today and you don't have the book and you would like the book, we have purchased a few books for our partners this morning. Amen. But the treat for those that showed up Thursday night is they were able to get a signed autograph, autographed copy from Pastor Shamar Martin. Amen. 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 So what we got next, Pastor Jericho? What we got next? So y'all, who's ready to sow to grow? Who's ready to sow to grow? Who's ready to give? Who's ready to give? Who's ready to give? Amen. Amen. So let me talk about sowing. Let me talk about giving. When you give to the excelling church, when you sow seed, to the Excelling Church Georgia campus. Men and women of God, you're sowing seed on fertile ground. What does that mean? That means is when you sow here, we are touching and agreeing that what you're sowing God and you're asking God to do with the seed that you plant, we're touching and agreeing that God brings back a harvest like never before. He brings back a harvest like never before. So when you give today, I challenge you to sacrifice in your giving this morning. I challenge you to not give what you're normally giving. I want you to give something that you know is going to be a sacrifice for you because God honors your sacrifice. He honors your sacrifice. Amen. So when you give this morning and you sacrifice and sow that seed, what I want you to do is I want you to put a target on that seed. I want you to put some targets on that seed and believe in God to do some amazing things. Amen. And we're going to touch and agree on that. Amen. So we got we got two ways of giving. We got our cash app. Our cash app is money sign, Excellent GA. And then we also have our Zell, which is the Excellent Church GA at gmail.com. If you're in the building and you would like to give monetarily, physically, and not electronically, we got a red bucket going around. It's been going around today by not only Pastor Jerrica, but by our my, my youngest, my, my general. DJ's walking around with the bucket, y'all. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Matter of fact, he actually got an envelope and pen, and he's writing. DJ about to sow seed, y'all. <laughs> DJ sold his Mickey Mouse. Now, that's a sacrifice for him. He sold his Mickey Mouses in the bucket. <laughs> Amen. 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 Amen, y'all. Amen. So we're going to give you that time right now to go ahead and sow your seed and have
have God lead you into the sacrifice, the sacrificial giving this morning. Amen. Yeah. church declaration okay so for those of you viewing online it's going to pop up in a minute for those of us in the building if you would like to stand okay we're going to read this thing together we're going to decree and declare some things that God is going to do in our life and we're going to stand on it and we're going to walk in it right we're going to walk in it amen amen so this is our, de our church declaration so on count of three one two three because I am a tither and a giver the windows of heaven are open to me, and God rebukes the devourer for my sake. I am blessed financially and receive blessings that I cannot contain. I do not worry about lack, knowing God supplies all my needs richly and abundantly. Therefore, I am able to sow freely and liberally. I choose to sow cheerfully, generously, and bountifully, knowing I will abundance every favor and earthly blessing all my needs are met and I abound in every good work because I obey him the Lord blesses everything I put my hands to he grants me abundant property he makes me the head and not the tail above and not beneath the blessings of God are chasing me and overtaking me because God loves to see me prosper. Today, I declare jobs and better jobs, advancements, raises, bonuses, sales, and commissions, God ideas and strategies, debts paid off, houses, lands, mind connection, expenses decrease, blessings and increases, financial freedom and breakthroughs, and it is so now a Amen. If you believe that, give God a praise in this place. If you believe it, give God a praise. Hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Father, we touch and agree 
that the target that your people have placed on that seed that they've sown, that not only will your angels go into action and will be dispatched to answer those requests, but Father, the harvest will be greater, greater than they ever imagined to the point where they become lenders and not borrowers. In the name of Jesus, Father, I decree and I declare prosperity, not just monetarily, Father, but prosperity of the mind, prosperity of the heart, prosperity of the emotions, prosperity of feelings, Father God. We thank you for it now. Prosperity in family, prosperity in marriage, prosperity in relationships, prosperity, prosperity. Everywhere we go, Father, we decree and declare prosperity in Jesus' name. And we thank you for it. We worship you for it. And God's people say amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, amen, amen. Wow. I'm excited this morning, y'all. I'm excited, I'm excited. I'm excited for a few things. One, because, I don't know, I'm happy. I'm happy because we got musicians, y'all. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> just, just, just tell it like it is. <laughs> We got musicians. <laughs> we got musicians, and it's it's a Holy Ghost vibe in here. So I'm telling you right now, if you're not in the building, try to make it your best option to be in the building next Sunday, y'all, because it's going it's it's a vibe, and we love God. We appreciate Him, because I I truly love that God has chose these gentlemen to be here. God chose these gentlemen. He handpicked them to be here. Amen. 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 And we love God for it. We adore God for it. And we pray supernatural blessings over these musicians. I decree and I declare right now that every situation that you have brought to God's temple, every situation that you brought to his attention, that God is now beginning to answer those prayers. I decree and I declare it right now because of your sacrifice, because of your willing to serve, because of your willing to serve, I decree and I declare this time next week, there's going to be some praise reports, gentlemen. This time next week, there's going to be some praise reports, and I can't wait to hear them. I can't wait to hear them. I can't wait to hear them. I can't wait to, to hear uh, just money just happen just to appear in bank accounts. I, I can't wait to hear. I can't wait to hear new whips. I can't wait to hear it. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to hear it. I cannot wait to hear promotions on jobs. I cannot wait to hear it. I cannot wait to hear it. Let me tell you something about decreeing and declaring a thing. When you decree and declare a thing, what you do is you get God's attention. You get God's attention, and when you get God's attention, guess what? There has to be action. There has to be action. There has to be action because you're using your weapon. You're using your praise as a weapon, but you're also using the power that God has given you, and you're speaking things into the atmosphere, and you're decreeing that a shift happens. So, men of God, I decree and I declare by this time next week, this time next week, we're going to be hearing something special that God has done in your life. Amen. 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 So, without further ado, who's ready for the word, y'all? Yeah, yeah. Who's ready for the word? Now, I know you've seen the flyer. If you are following us on Facebook, so I know some of you all are. Y'all ready for this one? Y'all ready for this one? Amen. 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 So, if you have your Bibles... Or if you have the Bible app on your phone, all that great stuff, do me a favor and turn with me to the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew, verse, I mean, book of Matthew chapter 4. The book of Matthew chapter 4. Amen. And we're just going to read verses 1 through 11 this morning. Just 1 through 11. Amen. So it says, then Jesus, I'm sorry, I'm going to be reading it in the New Living Translation going to be reading New Living Translation. Let me keep that going. Keep it going. And it says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights he fasted and became very hungry. 
During that time, the devil came and said to him, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. Verse 4 says, but Jesus told him, no, the scriptures say people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple and said, if you are the son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say he will order his angels to protect you and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus responded, the scriptures also say, You must not test the Lord your God. Verse 8. Next, the devil took him to to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. Verse 9 says, he said, I will give it all to you, he said. This is Satan talking. I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. Verse 10 says, get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him. For the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. And the last verse, I'm going to read it on the, on the, on the, on the prompt to y'all. It says, then the devil went away and the angels came took care of Jesus. The angels <laughs> went, took care of Jesus after Satan left. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So um, I'm not going to say what I usually say because I just feel something rumbling in my spirit when that last verse was stated. So I usually say I promise not to be before you long. But allow God to do what he do today, y'all. Amen. Amen. But I want you to repeat our topic today. I want you to speak this into the atmosphere because just as we decree and declare things to get God's attention, I want us to get Satan's attention this morning. I want us to get Satan's attention. So do me a favor, wherever you are, and I want you to scream this as loud as you can, even if you're online watching with us. Say, Satan, you tried it. Say it again. Say, Satan, you tried it. That's our topic for the morning. Father God, let us pray. Jesus, we thank you. (laughs) We give your name glory, honor, and praise in this place. Father, I pray right now that as I continue to decrease and I crucify this flesh, Father. I pray that you increase in me. Speak the words, Lord God. Give me what to say to your people. Have your way in this place. Use your manservant like never before. And I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice, I pray that souls are saved. I pray that lives are delivered. And I pray that your people are empowered. They're empowered, rejuvenated, renewed, and strengthened one more day to do what you called them to do. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Satan, you tried it. Satan, you tried it. So as we go back up to Matthew chapter 4, right, verse 1. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Now check this out. It says, then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. It says, now Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Satan, you tried it. Yeah, he tried it. Y'all can hear me? Am I good now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He tried it. He tried it. We got new mics, Satan. We got mics today. (laughs) We got mics today. It ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. So Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness. He was going to be tested, y'all. Jesus, the son of God, 
the, 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 the word that took flesh and walked this earth, he was going to get tested. The crazy thing about it is Jesus knew he was going to be tested. But what I was, what, what, what grabbed me that, in that scripture was it said he was led by the spirit. He was led by the spirit into the wilderness. He was led. Got a question. How many of us know that even in your wilderness, the Holy Spirit is still leading you? How many of us know that even in our wilderness, our whole, the Holy Ghost is still there? And he's still leading us in, in your time of confusion. Because when we talk about a wilderness, the, the wilderness is the places we don't want to be. The wilderness are the places that are uncomfortable. The wilderness is, is confusion. And in your time of confusion, guess what? The advocate is still there. In, in your time of frustration, because in the wilderness also we get mad. We get frustrated. There are some things we don't like, right? Right? There are some things that just boil us from the inside out, and we want to do some things that are ungodly because we're frustrated. We want to say some things that are ungodly. We want to think about doing some things that are ungodly. But guess what? In our time of frustration, the comforter is still there. So when I saw that, I said, whoa. So while in my moment of confusion, in my moment of bad times, in my moment of just turmoil, God is still there. Mm. But the crazy thing about it is, when I look at that, it said that he led Jesus through the wilderness. He led. See, sometimes our issue Men and women of God, our issue is we feel as though when we're in our wilderness, God has left us. We feel when we're, when we're stuck in the mess, when we're stuck in that mud, when we're stuck in the, in the issues of life, the first thing we sit there and say, God, where are you? Why are you doing this to me? Why is this happening to me now? What, what did I do to deserve this? Why is this going on right now? Why have thou forsaken me? But when I hear that and when we say that, the one thing that I guess we forgot, the one thing we forgot about our God is our God has many names. <laughs> we call him by many names. So in that moment, men and women of God, when we're talking about God, where are you? What are you doing? I don't like this. Have you left me? Remember that God goes by the name of Jehovah Shema. Hmm. What does that mean? That means God is ever present. He's ever present. Just not present when you're going through good times. Just not present when, when, when you're getting blessed. Just not present when the blessing is about to happen, but no, he's present when you're not getting the blessings you desire. He's present when things are rough. Mm. So why do we feel that he's not there? I truly believe that at that moment when we're going through our wilderness, guess what's happening? We're not allowing God to lead us through the wilderness. Because we don't like to be in places that are uncomfortable. Mm. We don't like to be in places uncomfortable. For example, we're in the building right now and our heater went out. Mm. I feel you, God. Our heater went out. So it, 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 and it goes out on the most coldest time in Georgia. Where it's 20 degrees at night. And it's about 50 degrees at 8 o'clock in the morning. So just imagine how cold this place is. And guess what? All we have is two small space heaters for one room. What that means is we have a space heater just that would heat a small room. And we have two of them trying to get the heat in the building. So most of the time when somebody gets into a, 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 a place that, that they want to be relaxed in and it's cold, they... Mm, I don't want to be here. I don't like it. I don't, I don't like it. My, my hands are cold. My, my, my feet is cold. I, my nose is cold. I don't like it. 
I don't like it. I don't like it. So, so it's a minor wilderness. But in that moment, when we're cold, are we allowing God to lead us? Because obviously he led you to the house. Obviously he led you here. Mm, mm. And for some of us, leading us here was getting us to a place where maybe he's testing us. Maybe he's testing how you're going to conduct yourself in his house when it's not what you desire it to be. Maybe he's wondering how are you going to conduct yourself as a man or woman of God in his house when the house itself is not comfortable enough for you to function. Mm. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, don't, I had to leave the church, man, because it was cold, Pastor Des. It was cold. It was too cold in here. It was too cold in here. But, but didn't God supply you with coats? Didn't Jesus, our God, supply, didn't he, didn't he, how can I say this? Didn't he give somebody with the, with, with the thought process on creating something that can warm you up in the process of being cold? Mm -hmm. Some of us wear it today just to step outside and check the mail and go back inside. But now you're in a church where it's cold and the only thing you can think of is, I don't like feeling cold. But God is wondering, how are you going to think and conduct yourself in a space where you thought it would be comfortable, but now it's uncomfortable? Mm, mm. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. So for 40 days and for 40 nights, he fasted and became very hungry. That's verse two. For 40 days and for 40 nights, he fasted. He fasted. Look, Colin's putting on his coat. He's like, I got that. I, I heard you, Pastor. I heard you. I heard you. <laughs> I heard you. I heard you. I ain't leaving. I ain't leaving. <laughs> I ain't leaving. I ain't leaving. My own, my own, my own mother-in-law put on her jacket. I ain't leaving. I ain't leaving today. I'm going to get this word. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're going to get this work. <laughs> you're going to get this work. Oh, you're going to get this work. <laughs> you're going to get this work. Amen. 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 So look at when the test came, y'all. Look at when the test came. Satan didn't bother Jesus before he was in the wilderness. He didn't bother the Son of God before he was in the wilderness. As a matter of fact, Satan didn't even bother Jesus while he was in the wilderness just doing, just walking around. Let me tell you when Satan bothered Jesus. Satan bothered Jesus while he was fasting in the wilderness. Hmm. Hmm. See, some illustrations you would read, it, say, it will say that Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights to prepare for the test. Right? And some illustrations, it just says he fasted for 40 days and for 40 nights. And then the next verse says, and then Satan approached him. So guess what Pastor Dez is going to do today? I'm going to use my imagination from my research and notice that it was during the time that Jesus was fasting. It was either on his 38th day, his 39th day possibly the 40th day, because it says for 40 days and for 40 nights he fasted and became very hungry. So what I'm thinking is at this moment, Jesus is on the tail end of his fast. He's on the tail end of his fast. And that's when Satan decided to test Jesus. Test Jesus while he's... Satan is so strategic, y'all. If we think the Lord our God is strategic, guess who he learned his strategies from? Hmm. It's only one place. Uh, Satan is, is, is strategic, but his strategies are evil. But think about where he learned his strategies from. His name was used, his used to be Lucifer. His name was Lucifer. He, he had pipes coming out of him. He was, he was, he was anointed with music in the heavens. And we wonder why we're having such a hard time battling music in today's society. 
Mm, mm, mm. Because Satan is strategic, y'all. All because I truly believe that all because when God kicked him out of heaven and a few other angels that decided to get big and decided to challenge God, when God kicked him out of heaven, he didn't lose the strategy that he learned in heaven. Mm. I don't feel he lost the strategy. Why? Because if this man was created out of music, imagine an angel with pipes coming out of him. And every time there was music playing from him, it was angelic. And now, because he thought he was better than God, because of, mm, mm, mm. see, look, it, it's kind of like how some of, it's kind of like how some musicians are today. I, I, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be in somebody's church or studio today. It's, it's, you know, we get to the place where, you know, I can play keys crazy. I can produce music crazy. I, they're calling my name to be here. They're calling me to be there. They're calling me to be there, and the price is right. So now, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to ask, I'm not going to negotiate anything. I, I, I'm not going to negotiate my prices because I can do this for you and you see my track record right so now I, I, I'm feeling myself <laughs> I'm feeling myself well my mother would say you smelling yourself you you get into a place where you feel as though you can't be touched so you're untouchable that's what Lucifer did he got to a place to where he felt as though he was better than God because I feel as though he was getting so much attention in heaven because of how special he was and the anointing gift that God had gave him. So when God kicked him out of heaven, I truly believe that he didn't, he didn't forget the strategy of music. He didn't forget how, how music can draw people. He didn't forget how strategic he could be in changing people's minds and ideas on God and turning them on the world through music. Hmm, that's, that'd preach a whole nother sermon right there. But remember his strategies. He's strategic. He's strategic in the way he decided to mess with Jesus, just like he's strategic in a way when he decides to mess with us. He's strategic. He's not going to mess with us when we just enter our wilderness, Joey. He, he ain't going to mess with us then. Why he not going to mess with us? Because we still got faith. Mm, mm, mm. Junior, Junior, we still got faith. We still got faith, mommy. We still got faith, Trinity. We still got faith when we enter the wilderness. So, for example, I, I, I looked in my account, and, and, and I, got a, I got a negative balance, and I didn't know where the bill came from. It came out of nowhere. But God, to be the glory, because guess what? I know I'm getting paid in the next few days. So I'm just going to go with God on this one, right? And then here come Thursday, and, and you look at your bank account, and there's nothing there. Mm hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. My, 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 my. Just like Johnny Gill. My, 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 my. Your account don't look good tonight. <laughs> Your account don't look good because you're still in a negative and now you got bills that are coming because nobody wants to grant you grace. So how are you going to pay these bills? And now you begin to pray. You still ain't lost the faith. You still ain't lost where you are. Now you begin to pray, God, I, 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 I truly believe. And you begin to decree, decree and declare things happen. And you're, you're moving on your faith, right? But it's not seeming to change anything. You, you're not seeming to get paid. Or let's just say you, you're praying or you got this sharp pain in, 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 in your hip and you don't understand where it's coming from. So you continue to pray. But for some reason, the hip pain gets worse. And it gets worse, and it gets worse, and it gets worse, and it gets worse. And, and before you know it, you find yourself growing weary with praying. Sort of like how Jesus was on his 40-day fast, and he was, his flesh was weak because he hadn't eaten anything. So we're growing weary in praying. We grow weary in praying for that financial breakthrough. We grow weary in praying for that healing. Or we grow weary in praying for that marriage to be reconnected. And it's not being reconnected. You see, after you've prayed so much and you see no result or no resolve, guess what? That's when the enemy knows it's his time. 
That's when the enemy knows this is time. We preached this the other day about how the enemy's like a roaring lion, and he's he just going to sit there, and he's going to wait. He's patient enough to, to pounce on his prey when the prey is complacent. So how well do we get complacent? How much, where, where does the complacency come from when things aren't looking our way? Or when we're in a place where we don't know. Us as men and women of God, our flesh, we want to know before. We want the answer before. We want to know that if I make this decision a month down the line, I'll be better off than I am right now. But where is our faith in the decision making? Mm, that's where God, that, that's where Satan jumps in. So verse 3, it says, during that time, the devil came and said to him, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. Strategic. Strategic, y'all. Now, Satan know Jesus is the son of God. <laughs> Satan know he the son of God. Satan knows this. I truly believe that he knew when Jesus was about to be born. I truly believe that he knew when God made the command of the word to take up flesh. I truly believe that. But this is what Satan said to Jesus. If you are the son of God, turn these stones into loaves of bread. Not just one loaf. Loaves of bread. Now, Satan also knew that Jesus was on a fast. He also knew that Jesus was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. So what's the first thing he tempts Jesus with? Food. Got to eat. He don't tempt Jesus with anything at that moment but food. Men and women of God, how many of us begin to fast? How many of us begin to fast? And as soon as we think we're good, that's when our senses get heightened and we begin to smell people's food mile away, like 15 miles down the road, or you driving to work and for some reason the smell of Chick-fil-A just goes past your nose, or the, the smell of, a, a, of a, the, the, the grandma's breakfast from, from Cracker Barrel just, just swims past your nose. And, but you know you're fasting. You know you're fasting. You told God that I'm going on a fast, or God told you to fast. God told you to fast, and you, I'm like, okay, I'm good. I'm, I'm going to eat as much as I can until 12.01, and I'm going to start my fast. 11.59, sorry, 11.59, and I'm going to start my fast. Right, right? Then I get up the next morning. I'm good. I got the music playing. I, I'm feeling good. I done read my Bible. I done prayed to God. I, I get in my vehicle and I start driving to work. And then all of a sudden, I'm smelling ham, cheese. I'm smelling bacon, eggs. I'm smelling cheese grits. And I'm smelling this and I'm smelling that. And I'm like, wait a minute. Where was these smells when before I went on my fast? Where was it? Where, where was it? And then all of a sudden, you know you're fasting food and you're just supposed to drink water. But that's the day when, when your colleagues want to bring in food for the entire office to, to eat and drink. That's the day when they're going to have a potluck at the job. When, when you decide to fast, that's when they want to bring out all these goodies. Mm, mm, mm. The enemy is strategic, y'all. He's strategic. He knows when the flesh is weak. And he knows for some of us that fasting already is a struggle. To fast is already a struggle. That's why we sit there and say, Collins, well, I ain't going to fast food. I'm going to fast social media. I, I, I'm not going to fast food, but I'm going to fast watching uh, uh, my, my, my uh, I used to call it, yeah, I used to call it Ratchet Mondays. When, you know, when the love and hip hop and, and all that used to come on, that was my Ratchet Mondays. I would sit down and watch these shows, right? Because, you know, when I would watch things like Love and Hip Hop New York, it was nostalgic for me. Because, you know, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York for 18 years. So when I used to see them streets, I'm like, oh, I was there. I was there. Yeah, he was there, right? So I would say, no, I ain't going to fast food. But I'm going to fast watching these shows. Strategic, because the enemy knows that if you do what you're supposed to do, because if we look up fasting, it's not eating food. That's fasting. Not consuming food. Not not consuming social media. You can't eat social media. You, 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 can't, you can't eat Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. 
You can't eat them things. No, God wants you to fast what you need. God wants you to sacrifice what you wouldn't normally sacrifice, which is food. And that's when the enemy is strategic. He'll tell you, nah, you don't have to fast. Or he'll tell you, I know God said, told you to fast, but you can go on a consecration. You can just fast breakfast and lunch, but you're going to eat dinner at night. Or you can fast, you can fast, you know, dinner, but eat you a big old meal for lunch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's how the enemy tricks us, y'all. And he also knows that many of us have a habit of never finishing anything we start. So we are an easier target for him. Because we never finish anything that we start. I'm about to start this. The enemy is like, yeah, I'll see you in two weeks. I'll see you in two weeks. Or I'm about to become a vegan. The enemy is like, yeah, I'll see you on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm about, I'm about to get away from fried food. The enemy is like, I'll see you in 30 days. I'll see you. Because the enemy knows that you're not consistent. The enemy knows that fasting and giving up things that you grew up on that are, a, that are a comfort for you, he knows if you sacrifice it, it's a struggle. So we continue to verse 4. I love how God responded. Watch this. Jesus told him, no. The scriptures say people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. See, Satan tried to tempt Jesus in that aspect of food. And then Jesus said no. Because God says that his people will not live by bread alone, but every word that cometh out the mouth of God. Somebody say loud, Satan tried it, but it didn't work. Let's continue. Verse 5 and 6, it says, Then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple, and said, If, there you go that word again, If you are the Son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say, He will order his angels to protect you, and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Let's check out what Satan just tried to do, y'all. Not only did he question who he was, but then what he begins to do, he begins to use Jesus, his status, against him. He begins to use his status against him. Satan knows that Jesus is the son of God, but now he wants Jesus to prove to him that he's the son of God. He wants him to do something that only the son of God is able to do. Hmm. <laughs> Men and women of God, have we ever interacted with people or certain people that, and you always find yourself having to constantly prove to them who you are and what you bring to the table? Have you ever interacted with people where you find yourself constantly trying to prove who you are? Constantly trying to prove what God has gifted you with. Constantly trying to prove that you, 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 you deserve a seat at this table. Mm. Constantly. Even though they know how gifted you are, y'all. They know how gifted you are. They, and, and they know that you've been called. But they got to see something or you can't sit here. Even though they know, and I'm telling you, I'm, I, I, I'm almost done. We may, have to, we may have to move this to next Sunday and continue this, but check this out. Check this out. Even though they knew, they know you gifted, D, Junior, they know. They know you gifted. They know you have a gift from God, not a talent. Mm. Ah, let me, let me, uh, I, I, I stayed on that long on, on, on revival night. I don't, I don't want to preach that over again, but it's the difference. It's the difference between a talent and a gift. The, 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 the talent may bring the people, but the gift is going to keep the people. Mm. The talent may attract, but the gift is going to keep them staying. The, the talent may attract them, but the gift is going to keep them coming. Because it's anointed by God. So, but you know they're anointed. They know you're anointed. But for some reason, they got to see it all the time or you can't sit where they are. Or better yet, someone is asking you 
to conduct yourself in a way that will not only compromise your walk with God, but then put you in a position or headspace you never wanted to be in the first place. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm in somebody's house today, y'all. I'm in somebody's house today. Or they already know you gifted, but in order to be at this table, Joey, I'm going to need you to do something strange for a piece of change. I'm reeling that curtain back today. I'm exposing some people out there today. In order to play here, in order to sing here, you have to do this here. But wait a minute, ain't this, ain't, ain't this the, 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 the Bethlehem Temple Church of God in Christ over the crucifixion risen on the third day? Ain't, ain't, aren't you apostle? No, no, don't know no better. Aren't you pastor and bishop can't do right? Aren't you the one that's been in ministry for all your life and you're telling me behind closed doors in order to be the person that God has called me to be in this house, I got to do something that is ungodly to you? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. Or they want you to be on their team. Collins, they want you to be on their team. They want you to, they want you to ride for us. You got to ride for us. I, you, you can't play here and then go to Excel and GA and play there. Man, I'm telling you, I'm reeling that curtain back today. You can't, you can't play here and then turn around and go to that church and play there. Oh, it's got to be some loyalty here. You can't sing with us in the morning and then, co and then go to a revival night at a whole nother church and sing there. You can't do that. You can't do that. You got to be a part of us. You got to have some loyalty, Collins. Joey, you got to have some loyalty. You got to have some loyalty because, Junior, ain't I paying you to play here? Ain't I paying you to play here? Ain't I paying you to sing here, Pastor Jerrica? I'm paying you to sing here. So why in the devil would you think that it's okay to use your gift that God has given you to minister someplace else? Mm. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Who gives you the authority to tell a person that is chosen by God to, to use their gift that God has given them that they can't be there to use it someplace else? See, this is the reason why the doors to the church are closed. Mm, mm. This is the reason why for an entire year and some change, the church has gone to social media. Why? Because God is tired of the nonsense. God is tired of you owning or think about how you, he, he's, ah, he's tired that you are owning people that don't belong to you. He's tired that you're using the fact that I pay you 3000 a week. Collins, I'm telling you, they're not going to like me today. They're not going to like me today, brother. They not gonna like me today, mommy. They not gonna like me today. They not gonna like Trinity. I'm telling you, they not gonna like me today. When you go back home, they probably gonna. Mm, if you sit there and say what church you go to, and you say the excelling church, Georgia campus, they gonna have a lot to say. Why? Because Pastor Des don't hold no punches. I'm very, I'm very transparent. And there's sometimes that my wife, Pastor Jerry, gotta give me that look. She got a mask on, but she gotta give me that look with the eye and say, "Okay, De okay, come on back, baby, come on back." Come on back. I need you. To, I need you. To, I need you. I need you to come on back. I need you to come on. But it irks me when I see this happening in God's house. It irks me when I see this happening with God's people. We are called the body of Christ, not the organizations of Christ. Uh, 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 uh. We are called the body of Christ. The body, the body. So what does that mean, Pastor Desmond? I can't function if one arm doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Uh, I can't function if one leg is not doing what it's supposed to do. Ah, oh, God, I feel you in this place. I cannot function if I'm blind. 
How am I going to lead the people if I am blind to what God is calling his people to do? And some of our ministries today are the blind leading the blind. Because they're so bent on if you leave, you're going to take not only your gift with you, but you're going to take a crowd of people with you. I can't have that. So what am I going to do? I'm going to make sure either <laughs> I'm going to make sure that either I pay you more or I make the other ministry look like it's mediocre. So that way you can't move. But I decree and declare today, if you got a gift from God and it's anointed and you know God has called you to minister to the to the body, minister to his people, minister to the lost. Because guess what? Your gift, your anointing is not for those who are familiar with Christ. It's, it's for those that don't know Christ. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Your gift is not, Joey, guess what? Your gift is not for those that are paying you. Hmm. Collins, your gift is not for those that, 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 that are paying you. Junior, your gift is for those that don't have the money. Your gift is for those that don't know Jesus. That's what it's for. That's, what, that's why he anointed you. That's why he anointed you to reach the lost, not the ones found. They found already. What you doing inside the church? I need you out there. <laughs> I need you out there. I don't need you in here. Okay, come in here for a brief moment, get refueled, get sharpened, and then go back out there and use what you've been taught in here. Mm -hmm. oh, Jesus, I feel you today. I can be on that all day long. But listen, men and women of God, what we have to understand is in that moment, Satan has crept in. He's crept in. And a lot of us don't understand that at that moment, for a lot of people, that's our wilderness. We're in our wilderness season where we're torn between ministries. For men and women of God that are, that are praise singers, for men and women of God that are musicians, for men and women of God that are praise dancers, for men and women of God that have a gift to preach and evangelize, yes, you need a covering. Yes, you need a spiritual covering. But if God is calling you to minister to God's people or to the lost, and if I see you downtown singing, guess what? I may be right there with you clapping because that's where your gift belongs. To reach the lost, not to reach the found. Verse 7. But I love how Jesus responded because this is what Satan did. Satan tried to use the scriptures against God. Satan tried to use the scriptures against Jesus. The word who took up flesh, Satan tried to use that word against the word that took flesh. Against how? How? Satan bold. He's bold. He's bold. Come on. We're talking about the man who tried to go against God, our creator. So you think for one second he ain't going to try Jesus? Mm. But look how Jesus responded. He said, the scriptures also say, you must not test the Lord your God. I love how he responded. It, to me, it, it, it was more so like a, like, it was more so like a clap back at Satan. Satan, you're trying to use the scriptures against me, but let me tell you what the scriptures really say. The scriptures really say you should not tempt the Lord your God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to clap back at the scriptures, but I'm going to use fact against your opinion. I'm going to use fact against your opinion. You see, Satan will have you taken, men and women of God. Listen here, and I got I to gotta end. I got I to gotta stop. Pastor Jericho put up the red light. So that means, Pastor Desmond, you got to wrap it up. You got to wrap it up. So I'm going to let you know now. Listen, men and women of God, Satan will have you taken certain passages from the Bible. 
they're not ready for this one, Collins. They're not ready for this one. They're not ready for this one, Trinity. They're not ready for that. They're not ready for this. They, he will have you taking certain passages from the Bible, have you interpret it in your own way, and act as though you are correct, when in actuality, you are about as wrong as two left shoes. Hmm, hmm, hmm. What, what are you talking about, Pastor Dez? You know what I'm talking about. I ain't got to explain it. We've seen it. We've seen it. We've seen men and women of God use scripture or certain passages of scripture and interpret it for their own personal gain. Hmm, hmm, hmm. The, the, the scriptures say bring the tithes into the storehouse and you ain't tithing. But read the whole story. Read who Jesus was actually talking to. Mm, mm, I'm, mm, yeah, ah. yeah, 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 I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave that alone. Joe, they're not ready. They're not ready. They're not ready. They're not ready. Jesus was actually talking to, 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 those, to, those, to those lead individuals, those apostles, those, those, those high priests that were, that were collecting the offering and not using it for God's glory. Yeah, 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 yeah. They were using it for their own personal gain. So, yes, you are to tithe. You are to sow. You are to give God a tenth, right? But in that moment, it wasn't a warning for the people that were tithing. It was a warning for God's leaders that were using the money for their own personal gain and usage. Sort of like what's happening in today's church. Mm. Yeah, Pastor Jericho wants you to play because that's my signal to be gone. That's my signal to be done. <laughs> that's my signal. <laughs> yeah, she's trying to be discreet. We're going to continue this <laughs> next Sunday. Listen, part two of Satan, you tried it. I just want God's people to understand what you represent, who you represent. And don't allow man to, to distract you. Don't allow, I'm going to put it this way, don't allow the enemy to use man to distract you. Because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and dark spirits in dark places we we wrestle against the enemy that's who satan was wrestling against in this passage he was wrestling against jesus i mean that's who jesus was wrestling against in this passage he was wrestling against satan and we're not even done with with what else he asked jesus to do but the crazy thing about that men and women of god he took jesus to the holy city it says the devil took jesus to the holy city the devil took Jesus to the holy city mm. some of us don't understand we feel as though we're being led by God but the devil is leading us and you'll understand if the devil is leading you because there's no fruit in where you are There's no growth in where you are. Satan led Jesus to a holy city and asked him to do something that only he would do, only he could do. And he tempted Jesus Christ at that very moment. And in the onset of his fast, him not having anything in his system to eat. And Satan was there to actually tempt him in what he was doing. Men and women of God, I want you to understand that as I close today, as we continue this next Sunday, that God has chosen you for such a time as this. And the awesome thing about God is he continues to use you. So when you find yourself in a wilderness, that's when the enemy will creep. When you find yourself weakening in your faith, that's when the enemy creeps. 
when you find yourself questioning your walk with God, that's when the enemy is standing right next to you. Because he wants you to try God. He wants you to question God. And in some cases, he wants you to curse God because of your situation. But I decree and I declare today, and I put Satan on notice, and I say, Satan, you may have tried it, but it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. Come back with us next Sunday as we continue <laughs> now a series. I didn't, I didn't want this to be a series. I thought this was going to close out the month of January, but God says otherwise. Come back with us next Sunday as we continue the series, Satan, You Tried It. Everyone standing in the house, those of you that are online, do me a favor, bow your heads where you are. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for this hour. We thank you for this season. We thank you for this calling. We thank you for this empowerment. We thank you, Lord God, for the iron sharpening the iron. And we call forth your glory, your might. And we say, Lord, have your way in our lives. Mm, have your way in our lives, Father God. We put Satan on notice today that you will not have what you thought you could have. And we take back what you stole from us. We take it back right now with the power that Jesus has given us. We take it back by force and we let you know right now that the weapons that you tried to create, the thought process of negativity that you tried to create, the atmosphere of the unknown that you tried to create, you tried to have us question who we are in God. You tried to have us question our ministry. You tried to have us question our people. You tried to have us question. And we say right now, it did not work, Satan. Because you're a liar. You're a liar. You're a liar and you're a thief. And we take back by force what you took from us today. And we declare victory. We declare victory. We declare victory over our circumstances. We declare victory over our lives. We declare victory over our family. We declare victory. We declare victory in Jesus' name. And we're walking in that right now. And Father, we give your name the glory and the honor. I pray right now that everyone under the sound of my voice, Father, I pray that you protect them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Every circumstance, Father God, begin to answer, begin to change, begin to move like never before. And we thank you now. We worship you now. We praise you now. We adore you now. We give your name glory now. In the name of Jesus, have your way. Have your way, Father. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, have your way. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you. We worship 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 you. The weapon formed, but it did not prosper. The weapon formed, but it did not prosper. The weapon came nigh our dwelling, but it did not do what it was carried out to do. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father. And we worship you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And God's people say, amen, amen. This is the Excelling Church Georgia campus where your life gets better from here. I am one of your lead pastors, Pastor Desmond Peacock Sr., along with my lovely wife, Pastor Jerrica Peacock. We pray that you all have an amazing week. Attack this week with the power God has given you. And we will see you here this Thursday for midweek. Y'all have a blessed day. Take care.